Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion. Another poetry discussion that comes to us, unsurprisingly, from the mind and pages of Emily Dickinson. Uh, look, this is a poetry discussion meant to take place in at least two separate playlists here on the channel, depending on when you're finding this. I've done enough Emily Dickinson that this, by this point I should probably make an Emily Dickinson playlist. Uh, but this will definitely be in a playlist dedicated to poetry discussions. Obviously, this is a poetry discussion, but also a playlist dedicated to National Poetry Month uh, 2021, where I will be doing a poetry discussion every day in the month of April 2021. But this, uh, the poem in question today is numbered 441, and it is on page 211 of the complete poems of Emily Dickinson. I'll just get into it. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. The simple news that nature told with tender majesty. Her message is committed to hands I cannot see. For love of her, sweet countrymen, judge tenderly of me. Um... This is always a troubling poem. This is always a troubling poem because it is, look, one of the things, no, um, by the time that Dickinson wrote this poem, um, she had already penned many of her greatest poems. Um, just flipping through the pages, before this, because they're set up chronologically or roughly chronologically. She'd already penned much madness as divinest since the soul selects her own society. I'm nobody. Who are you? I felt a funeral in my brain. Wild nights, wild nights. All of these poems. And more. I'm sure there's more in those first 440 poems that any Emily Dickinson connoisseur has, has heard, has read, has enjoyed. Um... And I just, I didn't catch them on that brief flip through. But to think, to imagine that someone brimming with that genius pins the phrase, this is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. That's heartbreaking. Um, this is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. That's, that's rough. Um, this was a poet by this point in time who had written some of the most astounding verses of the English language. Um, but I don't want to spend too much time there because I, I hope not to make too much of my criticism of Emily Dickinson biographical. The one thing that I want to uh, really uh, hone in on with, with this discussion is how unafraid of pain Emily Dickinson is with her words. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. The simple news that nature told with tender majesty. Her message is committed to hands I cannot see. For love of her, sweet countrymen, judge tenderly of me. When you think of your favorite Emily Dickinson poem, whatever it is, it is unafraid of emotion. A poem like Wild Nights, unafraid of unabashed sorts of, um, one would say lust. I, I would be tempted to say lust. Unabashed lust, lust. I died for beauty, but was scarce adjusted in the tomb. Uh, this is a type of um, yearning. There's a yearning in that poem that is um, very obvious, very on the nose, very well constructed. There is a, <clears throat> a type of ambition in that poem that is uh, unmistakable. But poems like this, po 
I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? Right? Um, and then this, this is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. Th these are painful phrases. These are phrases that when spoken aloud, they might make you cringe just from emotion. I mean, th these are things that, that don't take them just as words. Take them as concepts. What would someone have to go through? What type of isolation? What type of withdrawal would someone have to go through in order to even conceptualize the phrase? This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. That is, um, so there's, I think, a very large misconception about quiet people. And it goes back to the word dumb. Dumb used to mean you didn't speak. That's what the word used to mean. You didn't speak. You were dumb. Deaf and dumb. Didn't hear, didn't talk. Deaf and dumb. Today, we use the word to mean unintelligent. So this concept of the person who does not speak as unintelligent, there is, I think, an automatic discrediting of a dumb person's feelings or emotions, the pain that that individual suffers. Think about it in the way that we think about babies. We do all of these horrendously painful things to them um, because they don't have the words to tell us. So, you know, they're not going to remember it, right? Think of circumcision. An extremely painful procedure, but because uh, that baby doesn't have the words to look at you and say, please, don't do this to my penis. Uh, we go ahead and do it, right? Because fuck them. It's a, it's a religion thing, you know? Um, so the association between not being able to express pain, not being able to verbalize pain, and not... and, and pain not being real is very much part, I think, of the human psyche. I think that it would only be so prevalent throughout the human experience if, I, I think there would only be so many things uh, of this nature that we could point to if it were something inherent, right? Uh, something very elemental about not understanding another organism's pain <clears throat> means we don't have to pay it all that much credence. Um, Think of animals and the heinous things that happen to animals because animals can't say, whoa, 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 stop it. What are we doing here? In this tome of Emily Dickinson discredits so much of that so quickly. Someone who, by most accounts in her life, and again, I don't mean to get into the um, biographical stuff, but we're looking at it in the poem. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. We're looking at someone who is expressing lack of communication. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. Again, one letter, not two. Still, there's only one. This speaker doesn't say, this is my final letter to the world, insinuating, probably, that there were multiple letters before this. This, speak, this speaker says, this is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. And what I meant to get into by that spiel of all of this depth of pain that so many people callously sort of, eh, you know, poo-poo it off because the words are not there to express it. Dumb, or dumb, 
Dumb meaning quiet does not mean unsuffering. It's obvious here in the pages of Emily Dickinson that someone who does not communicate all that much is capable of suffering. Uh, there is a lot of suffering in these pages. Um, and this is one of the most crucial parts, I think, of literature. Can I level with you for a minute? I hate the phrase I think, and I don't know why I say it. Obviously, if it's coming out of my mouth, it's something I think, right? Um, but it's one of the most crucial parts of literature. Putting forth this idea in the face of common accepted practices. Like the awful way that we treat babies and the awful way that we treat animals. The awful way that we treat people with mental disabilities. <clears throat> and I, when I say we, I don't mean like, this is what I go out and do for fun. I don't, I don't want to put that idea out there. Um, go out and smack some puppies around, right? But one of the most crucial aspects of literature is something like this that makes us go, oh, holy hell, yeah, no, that's there. That's there. Here's Emily Dickinson communicating all of these things that were happening behind what would have probably been described um, as a dumb personage. Um, as a dumb countenance. Yeah. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. The simple news that nature told with tender majesty. Her message is committed to hands I cannot see. For love of her, sweet countrymen, judge tenderly of me. So much raw suffering from time to time in Emily Dickinson that we have to reconceptualize what it means to not cry out in terror or cry out in pain. That's all I have for this poetry discussion. Uh, I hope to have you back tomorrow for another poetry discussion. I have new videos on the channel Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, Mondays are for poetry. Uh, and I also have new videos on my personal channel. I have to say, not quite Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but um, a link to which a link to my personal channel can be found in the description below. Hope to have you over there as well.